On today's show, we're going to be looking at the Godox V860 2 for the Olympus slash Lumix Micro Four Thirds lineup. These are third party flashes that cost a lot less than the first party flashes and quite frankly, might actually be better. Good afternoon and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live, no longer three times a week, now two times a week show. Sorry about that, but things had to change. So twice a week, Monday, every Monday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. That's what this is right now. And every Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Hopefully you can find the time to tune in to one of those live, trying to split the time zones there. And of course, if you missed the live show, then you can catch it re-released up on YouTube, usually later the same day. Today, we are talking about this thing right here, we actually have a couple of these guys here. This is the Godox flash lineup. And interesting little backstory here. I've been using the Panasonic flashes. For those of you who may be new here, don't know me, I am a Panasonic a Lumix, Lumix, or Lumix ambassador. Sorry, we changed the name. Lumix ambassador. And I have been using the Lumix flashes, the Panasonic flashes, for quite some time. Um, but they are admittedly quite expensive. And there are some really, really good third-party options out there, Godox being one of them. And you guys, my viewing audience, have been asking me for a long time to review some of these other flashes. And so I thought, you know, it's finally time to do that. It's finally time to get my hands on these things and play with them. Now, I actually did some work with these. The first time I used them was on a photo walk that I did in New York. Uh, I guess it's like a month and a half or two months ago now. This was for the, during Photo Plus Expo. Did a photo walk where I did, we did a photo walk on off-camera flash. I borrowed a couple of these from b and I have hence since decided to keep them because they're awesome. Borrowed some from b and for the photo walk, fell in love with them, fell in love with their simplicity, their power, and all the features that I am going to be showing you. And so, uh, just to give you a quick idea, I'll show you some of the photos that we did there. Um, let me pull this up real quick. So these are just some of the off-camera flash photos. So that's, I think, just one flash hitting the girl down there in the bottom left corner. Uh, obviously, a couple different directional flashes here. You can almost see one of them in the shot there. And this is just the kind of thing that you can do with off-camera flash that you really, well, you can't do <laughs> quite simply. You cannot do with on-camera flash. You gotta get the flashes in different positions for these kind of shots to happen. And they're great. They're great not only because they don't cost very much. They're also great because the wireless technology is built into them. The ability to have multiple flashes in different positions talking to each other wirelessly is all built in. And it's great because that wireless technology is radio, not infrared. See, a lot of flashes are infrared and that requires line of sight. So if I have a flash here and a flash here, it triggers it, no problem, fine. But if I take this flash and I stick it behind the wall or outside because I want it to blast through a window or whatever the effect is, and it's not line of sight, suddenly infrared doesn't work anymore. So the radio that's built into these is awesome. Now I said these things are really affordable. Let me, let me bring up a B&H page so you can see what these cost. So this is the flash only kit. Um, it's kind of weird, there are buttons here. It says Olympus and then here Olympus slash Panasonic. It's the same. The O model is the same that's for both. 179 for the flash. That's, I mean, that's like, uh, uh, that's super cheap. <laughs> you compare it to the OEM ones from Canon or Nikon or Panasonic or any of the others, and they're like three or four times that cost. So it's a huge, huge price savings. Now that's just the flash. There's also a trigger that I will be showing you. I'm going to show it to you on camera right now, but then I'm not going to demo it until part two of this show. But this little trigger here takes it to yet another level of convenience. And if you want to buy that trigger on its own, it's only $46, or you can buy it as a kit. Uh, obviously, there's a link to this down below. If you do decide to buy one because of the show, I would appreciate it, of course, if you use my link. That's awesome. Affiliate links, and they will be coming from B&H because they're the ones who provided these in the first place. Incidentally, I didn't say this in the, in the beginning. For those of you who are watching live, this is obviously the live show. We will do a Q&A at the end of the show, so just drop your questions into the live chat room at any time you like. I will pull Pull those up on screen at the end, and we will do our best to answer them. Okay, so uh, let's let's just go through the feature set of these things. That's what I want to do first. I want to show you what's in this, what comes in the box, and just kind of do the the roundup. Here's your flash. It's big. It's a good, big, beefy flash. It comes with a carrying case, which surprisingly doesn't have a belt buckle thing on it, which a belt loop, which is a little surprising. It's one of those simple things that's actually really convenient. You have the straps hanging off your belt, but anyway, it doesn't. Um, it does come with, oops, I took it out. It does also come with a little stand to stand the light on. So if you want to do a, you know, put it like this, put it on a table somewhere, you can do that. That it comes with, and that will fit inside of this little pouch. There's a little pocket for that in there. It comes with the charger because this thing operates on a rechargeable battery. And when I first learned that, I was a little 
remiss about that. I, thought, I don't think I like that idea of having the rechargeable battery. I like that I can use double A's, that I can have my own rechargeables, and in a pinch I can go out and buy more double A's. And that, to a degree, remains true. However, this battery is pretty robust, and the specs say that it'll last 500 flashes. I took this out for whatever this three hour photo walk, shot hundreds of pictures, um, maybe not 500, but definitely hundreds of shots. And the flashes were getting passed around, or passed around among multiple people. We were all playing with them. Obviously, we weren't always firing them at full power, so maybe that 500 ratings at full power. But after that photo walk, I then put these things in my bag, came back home, have not used them, and that was what did I say, a month and a half or two months ago, pulled them out today, and they were still at full, I mean, obviously not full, full power, but the readout was still showing full power. So these batteries are pretty good. Um, you can buy additional batteries. If you are really concerned about that, you can buy an additional battery pack. But so far in my experience, admittedly limited, but in my experience, they do really have a very good life. So that's kind of cool. Um, neat little feature here I want to show you in a close-up on here. And I guess this isn't totally unique, but it is a cool little feature here. So we're looking at the bottom of the hot shoe. And as I screw this in to lock it, so we're obviously looking at it upside down. You see this little post sticking up right there, that little post? It's like a locking pin. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. However, when that locking pin, let me do this. I'm going to take this completely off. Okay, so the flash is completely unlocked. It slides on. Obviously, it slides off again. Oops, or it triggers if you leave it on. I'm going to slide it on. I'm going to start to thread this down just a little bit. It's certainly not down all the way, but already it's locked into place. That locking pin has secured it. So I can continue to spin this, get it really tight on there. But as I'm shooting it, for whatever reason, it starts to loosen, starts to loosen. It's not going to fall off. You have to get it almost completely up, almost completely loosened before it comes off. Simple little features, but I really like that. I really like that. OK, let's, let's take a look at the hardware itself. I've set up a new view here, a little split view. And actually, here, we know we're going to start with just the overhead to get a little more room in here. OK, so tilting head, as you would expect on there, there's no release button. You don't have to push a button to release it. It just tilts. It's friction. It tilts, and it rotates. Why does it rotate, you might be asking? If you've never used flash like this before, it does this so if I'm shooting straight ahead, and I want to bounce the light off of the ceiling, I can. It rotates like this, not so that I can blind somebody there, but so that I can shoot vertical, shoot portrait orientation, and still bounce off of the ceiling. It does a full rotation, so you could like bounce it off of the light, the wall behind you if you wanted, even. Just don't wear a hat while doing that. But it's full rotation on there, which is, and that's what you'd expect. This is normal, standard thing. You'd expect to find that. The fact that there's no release button is kind of nice. It's just a, one less mechanical thing to go, uh, to go bad. It's just a friction mount, which seems quite, quite snug on there. So I think, I think that's good for a while. I do want to remind you of this. The way that we work here on this show is we operate on something we call a value for value proposition. What that means is if you feel like you have taken value from today's show, then I would most certainly appreciate it if you consider putting a little bit of value back. There are lots of different ways you can do that. If you go to photojoseph.com support, you'll see all the ways listed there. But honestly, the most important way is to simply if you decide to buy something based off of the show, to use my affiliate links. That's what helps the most. We also have membership options over at photojoseph.com, which are super awesome too. Uh, let's see here. You saw the battery pack on this side. Battery opens there. There's your battery door. Pops that in. On the other side of this, you have a little door here. Inside of that, you have a standard PC sync port. So that's great if you're going to use this in a totally traditional wired, wired setting where you want to have the flashes somewhere else with a wire running to it, or you're running it at a really, really, really long distance, you can do a standard old-fashioned PC sync. It'll take that. It also has this curious wireless communication port on here, which must be for some external wireless thing. I haven't dug into it because it has wireless built in, but anyway. Um, and then there's also this USB port. It actually can be updated. You can update the firmware on this. And in fact, right before the show, I looked it up. It turns out there's a 1.4 version update available now. This has got 1.1 on it. I didn't want to update it right before the show and not know what was going on. So I'll do that before part two of this show. But it does have a firmware update control. Pretty cool. And now let's look at the back of it. Let's look at the meat of this thing. Right, now we're going to go in the split view here. Uh, a lot of different buttons on here. And what's really neat about these buttons is most of them are what we call soft buttons. They change depending on what mode you're in. So let's run through them. So power switch right there. You have, let me get this into standard mode. I wanted to, didn't want to show that quite yet. So we're, we're, I just turned it on. We're in our standard TTL mode. You have a mode button here. 
you have a wireless button over here. It says your dedicated wireless button, dedicated mode button, and then these four buttons across the top are soft buttons. They will change depending on what you're doing. And then you have a command dial here that you can spin and a set button to do whatever you're doing in the command dial. And then there's, of course, the standard little flash uh, test button right there. So you have three primary modes to work in, in here. You have your TTL mode. So the TTL is through the lens metering. This is your fully automatic. It's like magic. It's incredible auto mode. I, I'm, I gotta be honest, TTL has come a long way. It is really, really awesome. TTL works. You hit that once, oops, wrong button. You hit that once and it goes into manual mode. So full manual, I just wanna set the, ma the flash completely manually. And then the third cycle is the multi mode. So this is where you wanna do multi syncs, like the kind of thing where someone's jumping in the air, you shoot it in a dark room, you leave the camera shutter open for a second or two seconds, they jump in the air, it goes pop, 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 pop while they're jumping and you get multiple strobes, multiple images of them on the same frame. Um, good fun stuff, kind of old school, but definitely a cool thing to have. So you have that control in there. I hit it again and it goes back to the TTL mode. Now if I go over to the wireless button, right now wireless is turned off. I press it once and first of all, you'll see this little indicator here that tells me that it's in wireless mode. It is now the wireless command mode or the wireless master mode. This, if it was on the camera, in the wireless master mode would trigger another one of these or any number of these elsewhere in the room. So that is how the wireless master works. This becomes the master, other flashes become the slave. To make a flash a slave, you hit this button again and it cycles to the slave mode. And notice how the, ch the color changed. I really like this. When you're in a master or standard mode, so this is the flash, this is controlled from here, it's green. When you hit over to the slave mode, the LCD turns orange, the backlight turns orange. So it's a very, very clear indicator what mode you're in. I, I think it's a really nice, subtle, but very good touch. So let's start with the standard TTL mode in here. And I'm just gonna very quickly run through these buttons on here. If somebody who's watching this who's never used this before, you might learn a couple things about it. Um, if you're thinking about getting them, you'll see just how much there is in these lights and you'll see how easy they are to use. I've, I have admittedly gone to the manual a couple of times to go, what does this indicator mean? But other than that, and I will explain those, um, other than that, it's really quite easy to figure out. So we're in TTL mode. As I said here, you've got four soft buttons. So right now this first one is zoom or CFN, CFN for custom function. The flash actually has, like many cameras, have deeper mode settings that you can go into, kind of preferences. Let's call them preferences, has preferences. If I press and hold on this for two seconds, it pops up the custom function menu, and you can do things like change it from meat to feeders, um, APO, that's automatic power off, there we go. Uh, you have zoom settings. Are you zooming this for a micro four thirds camera or for a full frame camera? The slave auto power off, <laughs> these abbreviations are interesting. And then you've got a beep you can turn on and off. Backlighting, which is kind of neat. Backlighting, I can turn on, have it on for 12 seconds, which is the default, and then it goes off or just off. I have it set to on just for these demo because I don't want to have it keep turning off on me, but um, you can change that in there, which is kind of nice. And then the LCD brightness, you can control that as well. Okay, let's get out of there, back into the main, main space. So the main function of this button is zoom. You'll see that it says 12 millimeters right now, and if I push that, it highlights the zoom, and now I can rotate this. And you can hear it, can you hear it? That's the motor. You're hearing the motor moving the flash head back and forth. So there's a focusing grid and the flash head moves back and forth to focus in there. Now you can set that manually, or if I roll this all the way down to the bottom, you see it now switches over to A. See so before it was at M, manual zoom of 12 millimeters. Take it all the way to the, down to the bottom and it's in auto mode. So now when I have it on this camera, for example, let me turn this on, make sure it's in auto zoom. It's in manual, let's get that down to auto. There we go. Now as I zoom the lens, you can hear the flash zooming as well, right? So the zooming the lens will zoom the flash head. It's all automatically communicated in there, which is pretty nice. Okay, uh, so that's the zoom function. That's pretty much all there is to it. The next button over is your standard over and under exposure icon. You're used to seeing this. I push this and this allows me to make my flash a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. So if you are shooting in either, a, a, well, it doesn't matter if you're in an auto or semi-auto or a full manual mode, but you have the flash in TTL and you're going, ooh, I just want the flash to be a little bit brighter, or ooh, I just want it to be a little bit darker, that's where you do that. Same as exposure under override on the camera, except that here you're doing it from the flash, so controlling the flash itself, make the flash itself a little bit brighter or darker. Ironically, ironically, maybe that's not the right word, oddly, curiously, that same icon is gonna be there for adjusting the power in manual mode, which I think is a little bit confusing, but once you know that's what it is, it is what it is. Okay, so that's my mode to change that. I'm gonna go back to, oops, let's go back to zero on there. 
uh, this button right now isn't doing anything. And then over here, I have a sync button, which allows me to put it into high speed sync mode. So that's just a toggle on and off. The camera, these flashes will support, at least on the Lumix cameras, can't speak for other brands, will support up to one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. So you can shoot with the flash in normal mode up to 250th of a second, which is totally standard. But in high speed sync mode, you can go up to one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. I did a whole show about high speed flash a while ago. I'm going to link to that up here. That was a really fun show. We did that, as I think it was a two parter. Um, I'll link to that. Check that one out if you want to learn more about high speed flash. We did that with the Panasonic flashes, but it's the same concept there. We're just explaining the concept and how it works. Okay, so now let me go back over here and switch it over to manual. If I hit this M button, it goes mode button, it goes into manual mode. And now same basic functions, there's my zoom again. This, as I said, the icon doesn't change, it shows the flash under and over. It's not really under and over. You're not under overexposing, you're just adjusting the power. So I feel like it should be a slightly different icon, but whatever. I hit that and now I can adjust the flash. So I can go all the way up to full power, that's one over one. So you know, full down to one, one twenty eighth power. So quite a good variation in there. This next one is the first thing that I had to look up. <laughs> You'll see here it says S1, S2. And as I push that, the little S1 comes up. Let me get out of high speed sync. Um, S1 comes up and S2. I thought, okay, what? what I, I give up. I had to look this one up. It's for slave, optical slave. So not only does this have the radio wireless slave built in, and it has the PC sync for good old fashioned old school PC sync cable sync, it also has an optical slave built in which means, and this is the really important part of this, which means you can integrate these into a studio environment where you have studio strobes. So let's say I'm doing a shoot in here. I've got my pro photo set up, which are full on old school, all manual lights. I can use these in there and have them triggered optically by my other lights. The reason there's two modes, an S1 and an S2, is S1 is your standard, the flash pops, it pops at the same time, obviously. Uh, the S2 is a, it's a secondary mode where it is expecting a pre-flash. So you may have experienced, and this wouldn't really be a studio thing, this would be more like you're using a different brand of, of uh, on-camera flashes, of you know, speed light type flashes. Most lights, when you're shooting in a TTL mode, it actually flashes twice. The first light, the first pulse, is a metering pulse, in, well, actually metering and communication. It's metering the scene and communicating to the other flashes, telling them what to do, and then it flashes a second time to actually illuminate the scene and take the picture. And it's like almost instantaneous, but there is that pre-flash. When you have this in the S2 mode, it ignores the pre-flash. It knows that it's going to get two flashes in a row, ignores the first one, fires with the second one. Kind of cool. Uh, and then there's the high-speed sync button again. So you have sync if you're doing high-speed sync on there. And then you go into the multi-mode. The multi-mode is something I'll say for part two of this show, because that gets a little bit more advanced. And we'll actually demo it, do some live demos in here. I wonder if I could get somebody to jump up and down and find something fun. So that's essentially it. If you're using this thing on camera, that's pretty much all you need to know. But now let's take it into the, into the master slave mode. So let's say I want to use this as a master unit. So as I explained, I hit this button here. It brings up the master controls. I know that it is the master because, well, I know that it's on wireless because the wireless indicator. I know it's master because it's green. You see four different banks in here. M, that's master, that's this light, and then banks A, B, and C. All right, well, now let's take a second light here and put this right next to it here. And now I'm just going to switch over to the straight up overhead view. And so this is the first one that I was playing with. So it's in master mode. I'm going to take this one and move it over to slave mode. Now I need these to be on the same channel. You'll see on here it says channel 28. If I hit this button here, I can rotate through the channels. I have 32, I think it is. Yep, 32 channels to choose from. So this is useful if you're in an environment where you've got multiple people firing these strobes at the same time or just some other radio interference that might be stepping on you. Or one of the really good examples I like to use is, let's say that you're hired to do a, a CEO headshot. And you're going to have 10 minutes with a CEO, and you've got, uh, you want to do a, a bunch of different setups. You want to have multiple setups. So you have a whole bunch of lights. You go into the office or environment or wherever it is that you're going to do the shoot. You set everything up where you've got multiple shoots. Let's say you set up three different sets. You've got a set at the desk, one by the I don't know, water cooler, whatever, one out the window three different lighting situations, three different environments, but all within the same working space. I can set one of these up to one channel, one to another channel, one to the other channel. And then I walk around with my camera and the master on it, and I simply switch the master to say, now we're going to fire, fire channel 10, that's these lights, and then channel 12 is going to be these lights, and channel 15 is going to be these lights over here. And you can totally program that. So lots of different uses, lots of different reasons you might want to change the channels on there. Then you have, so that's channel. Channel 26, that one's 28. I better get them in, in sync again. There we go, channel 28. So now these two will talk to each other. 
Then there's the group. So M is the master, that's this light. And then there's group A, B, or C. So for each slave, I have to define whether it's group A, B, or C. So here's my channel indicator, in incidentally. So that's where I would change the channel on this. So that's at 28. I hit group, and it just cycles through. So there's group A, group B, or group C. I'm going to leave this on group A. This is currently controlling group A. I have it set to manual mode, but I can go in here and say, let's change the, uh, oops, wrong mode button. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, incidentally, when you're doing wireless, you can do the multi-strobing in here as well. But I'll go to my group. Which group do I want to edit? I want to edit group A. So hitting this group button cycles through the groups. Is group A that I want to edit? What mode do I want it to be in? Do I want it to be off? And you'll notice that group M, the master group, is off, meaning that if I have this on camera and I fire it, this light, the master light, is off. It is not going to fire. It will only control the other light. This is acting as a controller only, not actually firing the light. If I do want it to fire, then I just set that mode to any of the other modes in there. I can set it to CTL, set it to manual, or off. I go to A. That's what this one is. That's A. Hit the mode button. It's in TTL. Let's take it into manual here. You see there it says 1 32nd power plus a third. You may have noticed that popped over here as well. And so now as I go in here and I adjust that, oops, get it back in, mode, 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 and oh, see, this is one of the ones I keep doing the wrong thing. I got to hit that. Oh, that's right. Ha! It's that confusing button. There we go. Hit that one. And as I change the power setting on here, on this light, you can see it changing over there. So as I take it down, see this 1 32nd, whatever it's there, it is automatically updating here. Notice these are not pointing, the lights aren't pointing at each other. It's because it is all radio controlled. It is over the 2.4 gigahertz, I think it says on the box, 2.4 gigahertz frequency, and that's how they're communi with, communicating with each other. And that's it. That is what there is to it, all there is to it, what there is to it. So you have full control from here. Now, one of the things that I'll point out, and this is something we're going to get into in part two, is if you're looking at these going, well, I don't want to have to buy one of these just to trigger one of these, that's where this guy comes into play. This is the X1T. It's the, it says right there, 2.4 gigahertz. This is a controller for these. It's only $40. This will allow you to do all the control over these lights without actually having to have the lights. You put this on your camera, set these up wherever you want, and away you go. That, my friends, is all there is to it. It's time to jump into the Q&A. So if you have any questions about what you've seen here today or really anything at all, feel free to ask them in the live Q&A, which is going to be starting right about now.